What's going on guys? Today we're checking out the classic HGUC gym. A little bit out of nowhere you may be thinking, but there is a reason for it. We'll get into that later. This is number 20 in the HGUC line, so we're going way, way back with this one. I've not ever built this kit actually, so let's go ahead and get into it here for today's review. So this kit came out all the way back in 2001, being like I said, number 20 in the HGUC line. I do love that original HGUC box art style here with this really cool illustration of the mobile suit. And then you have like a painted version of the kit over here in this kind of diorama scene there in the background. This is also one of the smaller box sizes. So some of the early HGUC kits, especially like this, uh, the Zigok I think is another one. I'm not sure, I think there's maybe one or two more that are in this shorter size of box. So just interesting to note on that. It's also also very thin so you know it's going to be a pretty minimal kit there in terms of the number of parts inside right here on the ends of the box there you go you got the same box art and like I said this is number 20 and on the bottom of the box a look at the painted sample of the build their front and back some information over here this is obviously long before we started getting any English on the manual on the top of the box here we have some detail images showing the beam spray gun the beam saber which I'm assuming is not going to be any kind of clear part as you can see it's painted on there so just gonna have a toothpick part there for that the shield the backpack the visor and it's all pretty basic of course here with the gym so let's go ahead open it up and see what we've got we do have that clear part there for the visor so at least that's nice let's see what we got here for the instruction manual again as usual for HGUC style we've got a nice big reference image there of the painted build over here some information about the mobile suit on the back side, kind of the same images basically that we saw on the outside of the box. A couple of standard poses there. It's got the open hand and it looks like maybe a holding hand for that side there as well, but they're definitely showing off that open hand. We've got the color guide down here as well. That's all in Japanese, but pretty easy to translate that if you need. On the inside, a whole bunch more information here about the gym. Some more photos, uh, large and detailed images of the kit over here. Some line art there that's pretty cool. That image there, it looks like that's what we saw on the front of the box art. Facing off with the Shar Zagok. Chances are not really looking good in that situation, but here we've got the parts list and the rest of the construction here is just all in black and white, of course. Let's go ahead and check out the rest of the stuff. We've got our one foil sticker with just this black bar, which I believe goes there on the chest. Some polycaps here in gray, PC123. And then we've only got two runners, runner A, runner B. So runner A is our four color runner there with a couple of pieces in yellow, red, clear bluish green there for the visor and then all of our gray pieces for the hands and weapons parts essentially not really too much on that even for like joint pieces most of the joints i think are gonna unfortunately maybe be polycaps we'll see on that and then for our b runner it's all the quote unquote white parts which are definitely in that classic minty green kind of white color so there you go very anime accurate there i guess for the gym very nice all right guys, and here is our little guy all put together. And I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with this kit. Going all the way back to being only number 20 in the HGUC line, I didn't have a whole lot of high expectations for it. I imagined it's gonna be kind of like a early HG, not the most solid kit, you know, very basic. And it is very basic. It does have a lot of seam lines, but it actually is a lot more solid feeling in hand than what I was expecting. So it really does feel quite nice. And in that way, it reminds me quite a lot of the Nemo, which was another HGUC kit that I reviewed viewed recently that I had kind of similar feelings on, but let's go ahead and take a closer look here at the kit and its accessories. And of course the accessories are gonna be here pretty minimal. For our hands, we have our two holding hands right there. And then we've got a trigger finger for the right hand side for holding the beam spray gun and an open hand here for the left side, which is pretty nice. Here is that beam spray gun, just a couple of parts, two parts for the main body, and then one part for the kind of barrel there at the end. You can see we are gonna have a little bit of a seam line here at the end of that also that kind of goes through the handle and through the front part of that on the bottom, but cool, very simple, small design there, classic gym. And then we've got our shield here as well, which again on the front, pretty standard, nice color separation there with that on the inside, this whole Attachment part doesn't actually move up and down only this part right here is on a ball joint So you can kind of move that around This is what's gonna plug onto the side of the arm You can also kind of rotate that for a little bit different angle This can fit into the hand there of course, but some nice detail around on the back side of that You'll just have to do a little bit of masking and painting there to paint that in in its gray Then for the beam saber unfortunately It is just gonna be our toothpick style here where you are gonna have to mask the handle and spray this or paint it in just some uh, pink. So you have this one up here in the backpack and this is just a dummy handle there 
Uh, so when you want to actually have it in use, you're just going to take that out and just use this one here instead. Now, there was that black sticker, which goes right here on the front of the chest. I haven't put that on just because I won't really be needing to use the chest for what I'm going to use this for. There's no stickers for either the main visor or the camera at the front at the top of the head or a sticker for the camera at the back of the head. Kind of would have been nice for people who do like using uh, those camera stickers on the head, especially would have been nice if those were included, but it is pretty cool how it is a nice clear piece there for the front visor and the head camera. You have some nice molded detail with the Vulcans in there. Of course, not a separate piece, but just to go over some of the rest of the seam lines here on the side of the head, you have a seam here. On the forearm, you have a seam down the middle of the forearm, down the middle of the thigh. The middle of the lower leg is gonna have a seam all the way down front and back of that. And then for our ankle armor down here, uh, I wanna pop off the leg to show you guys the nice thing about all the seam lines here for this kit is that each section can be separated. And so you don't have to worry about doing any modification or masking or anything like that. I guess maybe for like this lower leg part, uh, this bottom part is supposed to be gray, but you know, you can just remove your seam line on this part and everything's all good. Then when you go to paint it, you'll just have to just paint, uh, you know, maybe paint this whole part in your white or whatever color you're going to use for it and just mask that and then just paint this lower part gray. I personally would just hand paint that lower part there in gray. So you don't even have to worry about masking anything. And then for the thigh part, for example, again, uh, the way that the parts separate, you can just remove your seam line on that and you don't have to worry about modifying anything. The knee joint is just this separate piece which just kind of fits in there between the poly caps. So it makes it very easy to just remove the seam lines and paint the kit. The only part that is locked around a different part would be here at the ankle armor, but I feel like that's also pretty easy. You could just remove that while it's on here and then just paint it. When you go to paint it, you know, you just have to move this a little bit so you can make sure you get your paint in and around here and then just move that back and then make sure you get your paint around on this side and it's pretty straightforward. If you did want to modify it, probably what I would do is just cut down these pegs a little bit on there so that you can then still put this back into place later after it's painted and it's not going to be quite as tight and secure in there, but I would then probably just glue this in place and you can remove that seam easily and not have to worry about parts being connected while you're painting them. Now, like I said, the kit does feel quite solid in hand. It doesn't feel like anything's loose or rickety at all. It's a very solid feeling little kit. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the articulation of the head. We'll turn an up and down movement of the head is gonna be very, very minimal here. So that's one point of articulation that I do wish was nicer. The other point would just be here at the shoulders as this is just a fixed peg sticking out of the torso there that the arm plugs into. So you're not gonna get any forward and back bend at the shoulder at all. You can just raise the arm up to about 90 degrees. You can rotate it and that's about all you can do there at the shoulder. The arm will rotate at the bicep. You have a single joint at the elbow, which gives you about 90 degrees. Again, it would be nice if that was a little bit more, but that's kind of okay. The wrist is just on a ball joint. The torso section is kind of interesting in that you really only have rotation here, but if you raise this up, kind of pull it up off the ball joint a little bit, you can get some side to side movement here in the torso. Still no front and back though. You're not gonna be able to get it to move that way, but you can at least bend it a little bit side to side. The front skirt section here is connected via uh, like peg and a ball joint there that will allow you to move that up and down a little bit kind of all together and then slightly angled off to the side there as well. For the side skirts, kind of similar. You can raise them up and down. You, in theory, can rotate them. There's not really a whole lot of room to rotate them forward and back. The back skirt is just fixed here. The backpack, everything's fixed on that. These thruster bells don't move up and down or anything. You got your single hard point right there. That's gonna be, of course, for just plugging on the shield when not in use. The hips are unfortunately just a ball and socket joint, so that'll give you a sideways movement out to here, which is not too bad at all. Forward movement, because of the front skirt, is going to be quite limited only to about there, not even up 90 degrees. But the main thing is that you aren't going to be able to rotate the legs. There's no point of rotation at the top of the thigh, so if you wanted to adjust the angle a little bit out, can only get them to about there. The knee bend is going to give you a pretty good bend here, but again, you can't really raise the leg up very high. Unfortunately, the ankle armor, of course, moves up and down. The ankle itself is on a ball joint, so forward and back, side to side here, up underneath the feet, full detail there, so that's always nice to see. Another important thing to point out is that it does not have a hole in the bottom for plugging onto an action base. All you would really need to do is just uh, drill a three millimeter hole right in here and it'd be a very simple fix, easy enough for that. You could also take advantage of the hole here on the backpack for just plugging that onto an action base like that if you need for an aerial pose. 
And with that, let's take a look at some of that articulation and action here, taking a look at some poses here with this. So with the very simple accessories that this kid has and just the very simple overall gymness of this, you know, there's not going to be anything too crazy that you can do with it, but if you are a fan of the classic gym from the One Year War, then this kit actually is a lot nicer than I expected. You know, I wasn't like, like I said, I wasn't expecting too much, but it is a pretty nice and good solid kit. Now, as you guys have probably figured out, the reason why I got this kit and I'm suddenly reviewing it now, kind of out of nowhere, if you saw my video uh, just earlier, about the Project V uh, hobby is kind of resin conversion parts and stuff like that. One of the conversion sets that I have from Project V is a conversion set for this kit to turn it into a Jim Cannon. So that's what I'll be doing with this. Uh, I'll have an update for you guys in the near future. So that's why you may have noticed that in this review, some of the parts are actually already sanded. So some of the parts that I know that I'm gonna be using uh, for the Jim Cannon are already sanded ahead of time. And then I just need to do some seam line removal and then just kind of work on the conversion of that, which is a pretty simple and straightforward uh, conversion set. So I'll have an update on that for you guys soon. In the meantime, check this kit out. Check out the Project V Hobby resin conversion parts as well, all on USA Gundam Store. The link will be down in the video description as always for USA Gundam Store, check that out. If you guys have any other further questions about this kit, of course you can feel free to let me know, but I feel like it's a pretty simple and straightforward kit, but it was cool to take a look at something from all the way back in the year 2001. It's pretty rare that I go back and take a look at some of the older HGUC kits, so it's always nice to do that. Considering that we haven't got a new HGUC kit out in a while, it's kind of sad, but that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Feel free to like and or subscribe. Make sure that you're subscribed if you feel so inclined. I really appreciate it. It really means a lot and definitely helps out a lot. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. Until next time, hope you all have a great day. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.